Welcome to another FPS tutorial in the Gato engine. Today, we're gonna to keep building on our interaction setup and we're gonna be adding a highlight to any object that we interact with. As always, the source files for the project are available on my Patreon, so you can check that out in the description. In the last episode, we set up our component, our interaction component, which means we can simply add our, our interaction component node to any object in our level, and it's gonna make that object interactable immediately. In this episode, we're gonna make some adjustments to that component setup so we have a little bit more action than just simply printing in the output. So we'll head back to our interaction component script. Again, this is what's attached to our interaction component node. And we've already set up some signals to connect to our parents and have them communicate with one another. The goal is to add a material to any object that we are, are looking at, that we're hovering over that is interactable, so we know it's interactable. In fact, let's set up the material first and then we'll, we'll do the code. So obviously we're gonna be interacting with our, our mesh instances. And we don't wanna change the material that it currently has because we're gonna be hovering over it, unhovering. We don't need to do all that. There's a, a very neat and useful feature within the Gato engine and that's this surface material override. But we also have a material overlay. And what that's going to do is put another material on top of the material we already have. So this would be useful if you wanted to highlight an object but still have elements of the texture underneath. You can absolutely do the uh, override. There's no problem with that. But for this video, let's do the overlay. So we'll create a new standard material. We're going to save this because we're going to access this material through our code. So we'll go to our materials folder and let's add a, well, actually let's name it a little better than that, interactable highlights. We'll save that. And I think for this material, let's, let's do an emission. We can actually, we can look at it and test it out. Let's make it a kind of a green emission. Well, we don't want it to glow. Let's just have a little bit. And let's change the albedo to black so we, we get that color. Now we can also add some transparency. So let's do that. We'll make the uh, transparency to alpha, go to the albedo and adjust the alpha here. And you can see as we lower that, we're getting the texture of the material that we have already set and we want that. We just want like a little bit of a slight highlight there. Perfect. All right, so that's our material. We'll save that and it'll update the, uh, the little preview icon there. And let's head back to our interaction component. Now, the first problem that we have is we don't have any reference to our mesh. We don't know where the mesh is. The interaction component has no idea uh, where the mesh is within this little system we have. So we can do that a couple ways. The, the first way, this is a little bit more hands-on, is we can create an export variable and we can just set it manually because you might have uh, you know, a couple of different meshes in there that you don't want it to, to change. You want it to be highlighted. So you can set it within that variable yourself. Now that we have our export variable for our mesh, we can simply just assign it. Now, the thing that I don't like about this is that unless you're naming everything really specifically, it doesn't uh, make it super obvious where these things are. Now we do have interactable box, that's the name. So it makes it pretty easy to pick. But if you had a whole bunch of stuff, it's, it might be kind of a pain, but that's one way you can do it. So we'll select it. Uh, we'll select our mesh. Now we have a reference to our mesh instance 3D. And I'm realizing that I, I put this in the wrong spot. So put your put your export variables before your, your standard variables. The next thing that we need is a reference to the material that we created. So we uh, add a new variable. We we'll call this highlight material. And we're gonna preload this and then we'll grab it with our uh, autofill here. Interactable highlights, there we go. And the process of, of assigning this is actually very, very simple. So in our inRange function, which runs whenever we hover over an interactable object, we want to set, you can delete that print, we want to set the material overlay to our highlight material. That's it. That's all we need to do. And then when we unhover, means we're not looking at it, we'll take that material overlay and we'll set it to null, set it to nothing. So we'll go back to our FPS controller 
Right here is uh, our unfocused when we are unhovering, and right here is when we are hovering over our object. So all we need to do is uh, get whatever object that our raycast is hitting. That's interactable. And we're going to emit our focused signal. And we'll do the same thing for when we unfocus. That should take care of it. And now, obviously, whenever we are uh, hovering over something, we're actually calling the function that we want to call. So we'll play that. And let's go and test. There we go. So we have our hover and unhover, and that's that's the highlight effect. That's that's all there really is to it. Now we do have uh, one thing that we can change, and that's if you don't want to sit there and manually set the meshes to every interactable object, because that I could see would be kind of a pain in the butt. So what we can do is we can use the input component to find uh, that mesh. We'll set up another function here. We'll call this set default mesh. And first we'll uh, we'll check. If we already set it, then, then don't worry about it. So if the mesh uh, variable already has something in it, we'll pass. Else, we're gonna go through our parents and we're gonna check each of the children. And if that child is a mesh instance 3D node, we're gonna use that. So we'll do for i in parents get children, so for each child of the parent, if that child is a mesh instance 3D, then mesh equals that child. It may not be the most um, graceful way of doing it. For instance, if you had multiple meshes um, as children, but if you got one, it's gonna happen automatically. You can definitely uh, refine this to make it a little bit more uh, accurate. So we have our set default mesh, and let's run this whenever we uh, when we load. We'll set that, and now, whenever we we test this, even though we haven't set the meshes on the the three other boxes, the or the two other boxes, they should still hover, and they do, because we've automatically set the reference to that mesh. And now we have our interactable objects, and they highlight, and we can adjust that highlight material super easily. And now we're ready to add some some cooler interactions than just let's make uh, let's make it glow. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can check out the Patreon for the source files and uh, keep creating. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.